Hey everyone, Tankenstein here, and happy April Fools! As is tradition with War Thunder, there is a brand new game mode coming, and this time it is called Mad Thunder Rage and Loot. Basically, this is a mix of War Thunder, Crossout, which is Gaijin's other game, and, of course, Mad Max, and in my opinion, it works very, very well. So in this video, I'll be kind of going over the event, going over the details of it that you need to know so that you can actually complete this event and get some of the really, really cool rewards. Again, this is a very in-depth event, and it lasts from April 1st at 11 GMT all the way to April 22nd at 11 GMT, so about three weeks. And basically, the name of the game here is that you are going to use some of the vehicles that they give you. The first ones that you get are the porcupine, echidna, and the boar, and then you want to collect resources, shoot at enemies, kill enemies, and hopefully drive your resources off the map so you can keep them at the end of the battle. Pretty simple. It sounds a little bit crazy, but it really isn't. This is actually one of the more simple ones, yet one of the more in-depth April Fool's that they've probably ever had. It's There's a lot to go over. So first, let's go over the rewards, and I'll go over exactly how to get these rewards in just a second. You can get three decals, as you can see here, a ship flag, which is really, really cool. In my opinion, this is the coolest ship flag they have in-game. If you're not a big fan of the historical ship flags, of course, this is awesome. You can get yourself the Interceptor Driver profile icon. You can get yourself two different decorations and a loading screen as well as a loot carrier title. All of these require rage tokens, which I'll go over in just a second. Now, basically on the map, you'll find basically just a huge barren landscape. And on that landscape, you will see in the mini map a few different circles with different icons on them. Those icons indicate what type of resources are going to be there. And basically, you want to either shoot boxes, like there, there's going to be crates and barrels and all that that are going to be stacked up on top of each other. You can either shoot them or you can do what I do and just run over them. And in doing so, you get those resources. Now, you only have a limited amount of resources that you can carry with each vehicle. For example, the Echidna and the Porcupine, which are the two starter vehicles that you can get along with the Boar, but the Echidna and the Porcupine can only carry 25 resources, whereas the Boar can carry up to 50. So you have different sort of resources that you can carry with different vehicles, or different amounts rather, and that is something that you're going to want to consider. Now, from this point, what you're going to want to do is once you have a fully loaded carrier, you don't technically need a fully loaded amount of resources on your vehicle in order to evacuate, but there will be a little door icon on one of the sides of the map that you want to drive to, and that's how you can take your resources off the map and you get to keep them by the end of the game. Pretty simple, in my opinion, but of course, it is very treacherous, and you also have two different game modes. You have free-for-all and team battle. Personally, I prefer team battle. It is a bit less treacherous because not everybody is going after you, but free-for-all could be fun as well. And so with that being said, there are a ton of different vehicles you can get. So like I said, to start off, you can get yourself the boar, echidna, and the porcupine. Most people I've been seeing have been playing the echidna, but you can actually upgrade these vehicles to have more armor so that they're more survivable, or you can purchase other vehicles like the Armadillo, if I'm not mistaken, is one of them. The Reptile is another. It is just crazy, again, how in-depth this is because you have not only a temporary tech tree that is being added for a three-week event in War Thunder, but you can upgrade these vehicles with different things like loot scanners, with more armor. You can get rage scanners, again, more armor on your vehicles. You can get a ton of different things in this event and quite honestly this might be one of the few April Fool's Day events that I play for more than a few days because you can get not only really cool rewards but again it's so in depth now when it comes to rage as I had mentioned before you can basically get that by destroying enemies and collecting rage flags from the carcasses of destroyed vehicles now rage tokens are guaranteed at the end of the raid which basically means that if for example you die with all of your resources so before you get to the evac zone and you have like 25 scrap metal or like 10 scrap metal 10 electronics 5 whatever the thing is if you die before you evac you don't get to keep those resources so you have to evac with those 
But if you get a rage token in the middle of the match, doesn't matter if you die or not, you keep that at the end of the battle. It says also, in addition to this, earned rage in battle will allow you to respawn in the same raid using more powerful vehicles, which again, you will unlock in the progression tree. And I'll just read this verbatim from here on out because rage is probably the most complicated part of all of this. So it says, at the beginning of each raid, all vehicles will receive a black rage flag. Each destroyed enemy immediately adds a mark of rage to the flag, which is a white oblique stripe. Don't forget to drive near the corpse of a defeated enemy to get extra rage from their flag. If the rage level of the destroyed raider was higher, then when picking up the flag, your rage level will become equal to the enemy that you destroyed. It's easy to turn from a hunter into a victim. When you reach the highest fifth level of rage, the marks on your flag stop adding up and your combat vehicle becomes visible to all raiders on the minimap, so prepare for battle. The Rage Gainer modification will make it easier to find nearby Rage flags. Activate this modification in battle and this scanner will briefly highlight destroyed vehicles with available Rage flags on the map. Oh, and one last thing. After respawning in a new vehicle, the marks on the Rage flags are reset. You can now earn new ones. And of course, there are also Sandstorms. Now, basically, Sandstorm is the harbinger of the end game. So each match is about 15 minutes. And typically, Sandstorms come into battle around seven or seven and a half minutes. And from there on out, they kind of obscure your vision a little bit. But more or less, what that's going to do is, again, kind of be the harbinger of the battle. It's kind of like their end game mechanic. So once the Sandstorm fully takes over, the clock reaches zero seconds and the match is over. Now, basically, you get three vehicles again to start, the Porcupine, Echidna, and the Boar, but like you saw before, you can also get other vehicles as well that you have to be able to unlock via the tech tree, which the only way to be able to get those vehicles is by playing the game. So basically, the more you play, the more vehicles you can then play in game and the better you should be able to do so it's kind of like an additive effect in that regard but with that being said just to kind of put this in summation you have three vehicles to start you can get more throughout time in your progression tree and of course you can upgrade your vehicles as well typically with more armor but you can get things like scanners ess whatever else and then what you're going to want to do is take those vehicles in your match run over different sort of resource patches that you can find on your mini map find the crates and barrels and whatever else run into those collect the resources once you get enough resources typically once you have a full load of resources you're going to want to drive to your evacuation zone hopefully no one hits you and you will be safe now bear in mind also once you drive through the evacuation zone you will lose access to that vehicle it's done for the match it's basically a one spawn vehicle, at least from my experience thus far. So otherwise, this is a very, very cool game mode. Again, in my opinion, the different rewards that you can get from this game mode are just absolutely ridiculous. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the decals, but I've never been a huge fan of decals myself. But the decorations, ship flag, the icon, and the loading screen. Man, oh man. So I said, thanks so much for watching. Please, if you don't mind, consider liking, commenting, subscribing. I am going to be playing this probably throughout the day because it is a ton of fun. By the way, thanks again. And I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.